Hi, this is John Galloway with Microsoft and this is an ASP.NET MVC3 quick hit video. In this video we'll be looking at the basics of the Razor View Engine. We'll look at some more advanced features and some follow on quick hit videos. You'll first encounter the Razor View Engine when you create a new ASP.NET MVC3 web application. When you click OK, you'll hit a secondary dialog that offers you a choice of view engine. And this is new in MVC3. Prior to that, your only real built-in choice was the ASPX or Web Forms view engine. So when I select OK, that's going to set the default for this project to be the Razor View Engine. Just by setting the default for the project doesn't mean that I've made a project-wide choice, however. Every time I create a view, I have the option of creating either a web forms or a razor view. So I can create a web forms view easily by just changing this and clicking add. So you'll see here in the same project, I have a web forms view page. One of the main goals of the razor view engine is to minimize the friction of code transitions. So if we look at a web forms view where we want to iterate through something and write out an unordered list, you can see that there are several transitions when we switch into C sharp mode, when we switch back into HTML, then when we write out some information and switch back into C sharp mode just to close out. There's a big contrast here when we look at the same thing in a razor view page. You can see that we really only have to do one transition here where we explicitly say, yes, we're moving into C sharp mode. And when we write something out, we just use this at sign to say either transition or just write something out. It's pretty smart too because we can still put in something like an email address and it understands that this is an email address and does not transition into code mode. An important thing to realize here is that this is not a new language. It's not really a dramatic new syntax. All we're doing is we're using this at sign to transition into code mode. And based on whether we're using CSHTML or VBHTML, we just write C sharp or VB code at that point. So to see an example of this, I've created a very simple class called Cowboy that has two properties, name and horse. And then in my home controller, I've created a new action result for Cowboys and I'm just returning a simple list that's hard-coded here. So when I add a strongly typed view of Cowboy using the list template, you can see that the actual code that's writing out these values is extremely terse. Instead of the longer page declaration, here our model declaration is very short and actually writing out these values just flows in with the HTML. One other thing to notice is that our HTML helpers are also very short and terse. So we just have at HTML dot. And of course we've got all the IntelliSense we'd expect. This concludes our quick look at the Razor View Engine. We'll be taking a look at some more advanced features in some follow on episodes.